How's everybody doing? My name is Mike and I got Miss Chloe hanging out on place behind me. So uh, what we're doing today with her is we're just doing her uh, basic uh, daily routine, which is where we get the dogs up off their place and we have them sit, uh, do a down, heel, uh, we have them heel. We basically go over all their basic obedience commands on a daily basis for about five, 10 minutes a day. And this is really gonna help your dog uh, every single day to know exactly what you want uh, from them. If you're not practicing it on a daily basis, it's gonna be hard for them to understand uh, what you would like. And uh, this dog here, she's about four or five months and she comes from the same home that you've seen the last uh, three dogs that I've had. And um, one of the things you wanna do very early on in the dog's life, if you get your dog at eight weeks, you wanna start doing what you see me doing in these videos, you wanna start doing that at eight weeks. And it's so much easier to teach a dog her size, how to sit, how to lay down and hold those positions. And it actually happens for them much easier. And uh, they do it with way, there's way less correcting involved. The dog hasn't had a bunch of life experience to feel like, well, why do I need to sit? I never had to sit and hold it before. I never had to lay down and hold it before. The dog's pretty new to the world, so it's much easier uh, to teach them. Uh, you know, so the other dog, the dog I have in the other room, Cliff, he's a much larger dog that I've had in a video. He's a, he's a much larger dog uh, than her, same breed. But, uh, you know, teaching him requires much more because he's so large. Uh, a correction, he, you know, he's so big that it's like he hardly even feels a correction. With her, a small correction is going to have a huge impact because she's so tiny. And like I said, it's less stressful on the dog uh, when they're younger to actually teach them uh, these things. So I'm going to go ahead and uh, get her up. And also this, these obedient, this obedience training feeds into potty training. Uh, she does excited pee. That means uh, if she has a full bladder, you pet her, she can release her urine. Uh, clipping a leash onto her can make her release her urine. And the way we have started to fix that is by setting up rules for her, which is these obedience commands, uh, going in and out of the crate. There's rules, there's rules in the crate. So th these rules are going to keep the dog from being excited throughout the day. If we keep the dog from being excited throughout the day, then there is a way less likely chance of her urinating. If we can get through the days without her urinating, that will now be the imprinted behavior. But as of right now, coming straight, or not as of now, but when I got the dog coming straight, uh, basically straight from the breeder, uh, she had no control over her urine. She would let it go as soon as she went out the door. She'd let it go if you pet her, she was, she was excited peeing and submissive peeing. So that means like if you're standing over a dog and you're a strong leadership presence, the dog uh, can urinate. That's something that actually happens out in the wild with dogs. They do it to show they're submissive. Obviously with our pet dogs, we don't want that happening. And the way we fix that is uh, by using a leash with them, not going in to pet them, uh, for just random uh, things. We do that when we know they're calm. If they're excited, we just give them verbal so that they're not letting that urine go. I mean, that's something you really want to do right from eight weeks. Um, apparently coming straight, you know, coming from the breeder, the breeder did not have knowledge of that because they did not do that at all. I can tell how the dog lived when the dog uh, comes to me and the dog was living at the breeders off leash and uh, you know, not not practicing holding their urine. Uh, part of potty training is we don't just let the dog go right when they get outside. We, we make them hold it uh, for longer and longer periods away from the house uh, to start to exercise that muscle. So we'll go ahead and uh, work her a little bit for you guys. Heel. <clears throat> Heel. So if she doesn't come off, we just give a, a little tension right there. Atta girl. Heel. Sit. I just moved her place there. That might be why she's a little hesitant. Good girl, good sit. I uh, just moved her place there. So if the dog's not good at something, that's what you want to practice uh, with the dog. Good girl, heel. So we're going to go ahead and put her back on place so we can just practice that. That again. Sit. Atta girl, place. Good girl, good place. Okay, girl, heel. Atta girl. See how that time? Sit. She didn't hesitate. That's why we do it again. Good girl. So I'm real easy when I pet her. If she goes to flip her head all around, I'll actually use that leash to correct her. Heel, sit, good girl. Okay, girl, down, 
At a girl. It's much easier to teach a dog this. Down. Good girl. Heel. Good job, girl. It's much easier to teach a puppy these moves than it is to teach a full grown dog. Sit. Good girl. Place. At a girl. Good girl. We actually want to keep it real. I'm going to let it rest for a second. We actually want to keep it real short with a puppy, real short and sweet, and you want to have success. I just want to talk about how I got these uh, moves from her. So to get her to sit, we, you know, I made a video about that. We just put a little pressure on the collar and uh, touch her butt and that signaled to her and got her to sit to get her to lay down. Uh, all I had to do is give her a little leash pressure and just tap the ground and uh, she, uh, she went towards the ground, you know, and this, this is obviously all after we broke her on the leash. When she first got on a leash, this dog would just run in circles and basically cry. She would correct herself and cry. So we taught her how to listen to the leash and how to properly follow that leash pressure. And uh, this is why you want to do it when they're young, because when they're young, they don't really have the ability to, to fight the leash the way they can uh, when they're older. They can't use, they don't have body weight uh, to use yet. All right, let's go ahead and work her again real quick. Okay, girl, heel. Good job, good girl, sit. And it's real positive, good girl. And because she came right off a of place, I want her to know, good girl, good job. That's why I said it to her right when she comes off. Timing is very important with these dogs. Your timing, your corrections, and uh, even your affection is very important. Down, good girl. She was already going down, so I went and took advantage of that. Good girl, good down. And if you do this with this dog the rest of her life, if the owners just practice these moves with her every day and as you're uh, taking her to the bathroom and living with her practicing these things, the dog will be so much easier for the rest of her life uh, as opposed to just allowing the dog to be in your home with no rules, no boundaries, no place bed and uh, allowing to get on furniture and do all those things. You're going to see all types of symptoms. and. Uh, this dog, I, I truly believe they would have been dealing with a, a lot of urinating uh, with this dog if she had not come this early. Good girl. Good place. Heel. Sit. Good girl. Good sit. Good job, girl. Good girl. Heel. Good job. Good girl. Good heel. Sit. Got a girl. Place. Good girl. All right. So that's it for her session today. She'll go in her crate and then we'll feed her in about good girl, good place. We'll feed her in about, you know, 10, 20 minutes. And uh, that's how they kind of earn their food with me. And this is how uh, we keep up uh, the training with, with the dogs and with the puppy. It is just so important uh, to do these things. This is what's going to keep the puppy calm the rest of her life. And this is what's going to um, make the owners the leader in the dog's eyes the rest of their life and it's all about making decisions for the dog and uh, to make the dog decisions for the dog we have to have clear boundaries rules a clear training plan uh, we cannot just allow the dog to free roam the house and just simply say no to the dog when they do things we don't want we have to set their life up their life up in a way that they're going to have uh, success and teach them behaviors like this that we want instead of unwanted behaviors like you know urinating in the home excited peeing or submissive peeing so this is how you're going to get control of your puppy is by uh, using obedience commands and having rules for the dog in its daily life